Hey everyone, it's Jack, joined by Dave Hello. once again. And today we're taking on another one of your big questions that we always get asked here at Hattons, which is analog or digital, which is the way to go? It's one of the most important questions for any modeler. When you're starting a new layout or refurbishing an old one, you've got to make the right decision on which system to go with. And we've got a bit of knowledge about that. We know a few things about <laughs> it. So let's help you take control of your layout. So there's two very distinctive systems that you can use to control your layout. The first of which is analog, which is sometimes referred to as DC operation. And there's also digital control, sometimes referred to as DCC. Okay, so let's have a look at analog first. What do we know, Jack? So analog is your basic plug and play system, really. So I'll demonstrate with this controller. You basically plug it into the wall, you plug it into your track, and then essentially the whole track is powered at once. You turn your dial, and that increases the speed of the locomotive. And essentially, it's just providing more electricity for the motor and speeding it up to make it go faster. So it really is plug and play. You have your wire coming from the wall to the controller and then into the track and it moves. That's it. It's really that simple. It's quite a good system because you can just get started really quickly. It's really good for your first layout or even for something much more advanced. And you can move up to different DC controllers like the ones we have here, which allow you to do multiple operation and quite a few different things, really. So it controls the whole track at once? It does. OK, so what if I've got more than one loco that I want to drive separately? The best way to do that is to set up isolating sections. Right. So as it powers the whole track at once, you could isolate between point work or have separate isolated sections of track with multiple controllers. And then you can control a controller with two inputs like the one we've got here. And then that allows you to run your multiple locomotives without issues of confusion. So while we're on analog, let's take a look at a couple of the controller options that you can choose. Right here, we've got Hornby's, well, this is quite new, this one. This is Hornby's basic control that you can use. And it really is that simple. You've got your speed dial on the front, your directional control for which way you want your train to go, and your inputs on the back. So this is what you were saying before was great for beginners, people who just want to get the train going on the first layout or just, as you said, for testing. And it is just plug and play, isn't it, That's really? It. It's really that simple. There's not much to it. It's really easy to set up. And there's quite a few different options in stock, like the Homey one, you've got this Gauge Master Combi 2. And these come in at quite a good price point. Some of these you can get for under £20 as well. So it's quite cost-effective means of getting control on your layout. So what about this? This looks a bit more, a bit more advanced. Yeah, it's a bit beefy, this one, isn't it? It's, quite, it's the high-end DC control that you can get. Um, so the HM2000, this sort of allows you to have a bit more flexibility in your operation. So you can see there's two different controllers on top here. So like we were talking about before with the isolated sections right. or running two at once, there's inputs on the back that allow you to rig it all up so that you can contr properly control two at once. And like I say, just a little bit more flexibility for Yeah, you. and you've got the extra connections on the back there as well for if you want to put extra lights on your layout, extra signals. There. Those aren't connected with the actual power yeah. of the tracks, so you can have them completely separate and just adds a little more flexibility to your operation. It really does, and while you've mentioned that, actually, that's another great um, point about DC controls generally, including these much smaller ones, is that they can be used for um, accessories like like you say signals and yeah. lighting and things like that just if you need something simple to control those and it's quite again easy to plug and play with those so there's quite a few different options dependent on what kind of modeler you are yeah so let me get this straight you can drive more than one loco on this single controller? I mean, you pretty much can, but it's a bit awkward because they're all gonna be moving off at the same speed and you'll have to make sure that there is enough power being supplied to the track to allow for that. With one of these, you can control more than one loco at once because you have got these dual controls there. But what if you wanna control locos at different speeds? On the same piece of track? Yeah. Well, that's where digital comes in. So digital, now a lot of people tend to find this quite overwhelming, but how intimidating really is it? It's really not intimidating at all. There's a lot of stuff out there for beginners to it who are starting off for the first time, but there's also some really nice high-end materials and controllers for those with really big layouts. Right, okay, but how does it really work? It's not that dissimilar at the start to how analog works. You've still got your wires to the track from the controller, right. and you've still got the power coming in from the wall, but this is where it gets different. Each loco has what's called a decoder inside it. So this is a little computer chip. 
Yeah. These all have their own individual numbers on them. So every loco has its own number on your layout. On your controller, you will tell the number what to do. So if you've got locomotive number four, you will be telling just that loco what to do. The whole of your track has power all at the same time. So every single locomotive will hear what you're saying. Oh, I see. So if you've got three engines on your layout, numbered one, two, and three, for example, they'll all hear that instruction go around if you're telling number three to move forward, but they won't respond to it. They're not number three. Yeah. But number three will listen and go, ah, right, okay, that's, that's for me, I'll listen to that. And we'll start moving around your layout. So you don't have to worry about the isolating sections we mentioned before. The whole of your track is powered, but you will only drive the loco you have chosen to drive. In a way, it almost makes it a little easy, doesn't it? Because everything's already hooked up, and then you just have to choose which loco you want to take for a run. That's exactly it. Now, we were talking about the decoders, and I understand that there is quite a few different types, aren't there? So there's a few that are different sizes. Some of them have got um, what are called harness wires, aren't they? And they're all designed for different sizes of locomotives. This is it. Now, as they come out of the box, a loco for analog is ready to go. All you need to do is put it on your layout, put some coaches behind, and drive. Yeah. With digital, unless you're buying a loco that's already digital fitted, you do need to put a decoder in there. Now. This is where it's worth having a bit of a read into it because these decoders can be different for certain locomotives yeah. and they are listed in the instructions and are listed on our website as well, but different decoders will be required for different locos. It's just a case of what they can fit in the model, where they can put it in the model and what sort of decoder it needs. That's it. I mean, for example, one of our little Andrew Barkley locomotives, you're hardly going to fit a giant decoder with a load of wires in there, are you? So you're going to need something much smaller like the six pin. That's it, it's, it's different de different decoders for different jobs, but they do all do the same job. They still control the locos in exactly the same way. So we've talked quite a bit about just running locomotives on digital, but there's quite a lot more features that you can get out of it as well. So there's various functions that can be controlled on a digital locomotive for your controller, uh, such as lighting. Uh, this can be your cab lights, directional headlights and tail lights and stuff like that. And it also comes into sound of the locomotive. So on your steam trains, you can have your whistles going off, chuffing and stuff like that. On your diesels, you've got your startup noises, horns, and various other things like that. So there's quite a lot you can do, but what else can you do with the digital? What else you can do is, we've got another purpose of some of these decoders. They look a little different than this, and they're called accessory decoders. Right. So you're probably already getting where I'm going with this. And they can control points and signals on your layout as well. So you don't need to have switches. It can all be done through your digital controller. Right, so it really streamlines the whole process, doesn't it? You don't have to have loads of controllers and bits and bobs all over the place. That's it, you can have it all in one set. So we've got a huge range of controllers on the table really here, yeah. haven't we? A few of which we've covered on a little bit, but what can they do? This is exactly the same as analog, where you've got a different controller for a different type of job. And there's some entry level controllers out there, such as the Hornby Select, which are really good at getting you started on digital. Yeah. But then you can work your way through. There's a couple, like of, couple of different directions you can go in with digital though. The main differences are how much power it can put into your layout. So with the layout all being powered together, there's a lot of options for many different locos running at once. Yeah. So a lot of different controllers will have different power levels so you can have more locos running. So if you've got a really big layout, you want a more powerful controller. Some of the controllers will control more of the accessories we mentioned as well, such as signals and lights. Some of them will have further ways of programming your loco, so you can change the speed at which it operates. You can change some of the details about how the lights, how bright the lights are and things like that. Is there a limit to how many things can be controlled by one controller? It really depends on the controller. It is all about that power, to yeah. be honest. Some of them go up to nearly 10,000, oh, okay. for example. So you might not run out with one of the bigger controllers. I don't think you're gonna have a problem, are you? No. But a lot of it as well is about how the controllers are set up. We've got controllers that look great on a desk. We've got controllers that work well in your hands. We've got wireless handsets. Also, there's computer control setups as well, such as Hornby's E-Link. So you can do that sat in front of your laptop watching your railway go around. And there's 
a lot of different ones there and that's really down to personal preference there's no sort of scientific experiments being done on whether one's better yeah. on a desk there's no for right example. or wrong is there it there all comes down to personal preference it might even come down to you might prefer the way this looks if you've got a specific design of your layout or if you've got somewhere you've, you'd prefer that to go or if like you say if you don't want to be fixed to one point in operation you can get something you can walk around with as well. This is it. And the most important thing is, is they do have a couple of variances in power and how you hold them, but the basic operation is the same. You've still got that way of wiring up. You've still got the decoders and the locos. That's common across the board. Right. So we're going to have to answer this question once and for all, aren't we? <laughs> it's something we get asked all the time. Digital or analog, which is the best system? The truth is, it's really up to you. Yeah. I mean, they're both great systems. We've given you a bit of an overview of both. And a lot of our customers use analog. A lot of our customers use digital. And we've seen some great layouts on there on either system, just as good operationally. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's whatever you feel most comfortable using and setting up. With analog, if that's what you're looking at, we've got a great team here with a lot of experience. So if there's any questions we haven't answered, just get in touch, give us a call, pop down to the store, send us an email, or even put a message on this video, and we can help you out get set up on that. But if you're feeling digital, we've got a great digital fitting team here as well who even fit decoders to locos. We've got a lot of our customers and modelers in the business as well yeah. who use digital controllers. So again, if there's something that's at the back of your mind, just wanting to know a little bit more, just get in touch. Right, so the choice really is just down to you at the end of the day. Um, everything you see here and even more products are available on our website right now. Uh, we'll put links down in the description um, to get you started on analog or digital operation. There's quite a lot of stuff to get you going. And basically, we tried to cover as much as we can in this video, but there's so many oh, more absolutely. questions to answer. <laughs> so if there's anything you want to know at all, leave a question below. Uh, we'll try to answer it in the comments if we can, or potentially in the future, we could do another video with some answers to your questions as well. Yeah. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to comment and like the video below. If you want to see more like this, hit that subscribe button right there. Or if you can't wait and want to check out a video right now, it's one here.